In this video, we'll discuss the pro a property of fluids called surface tension. This is really a property of liquids, not gases. Surface tension refers to the idea that, um, well, it surface tension is a property that results in uh, liquids forming droplets, essentially, um, and forming interfaces with gases. And two liquids of different surface tension, let's say oil and water, typically will not mix and they will form a sharp interface and we'll talk about what that means and how that arises. So, uh, we need to go back to the molecular picture of an interface. So, if you took a, an air-water interface, let's say, um, I've, got, I've got liquid molecules that are relatively densely packed and air molecules that are far and few in between. And all these molecules always experience attractive forces. And if you took one single molecule here, it's, um, and compared that with a molecule that's somewhere in the interior, so this molecule has uh, balancing interactions in all directions because it's surrounded by liquid molecules on all sides. But the molecule at the surface is not surrounded by molecules. Everywhere on one side, it's surround, it, it only has air molecules for company and those are not, they stay away, right? So there's an unbalanced force on this molecule and in order for that molecule to be at the surface, it needs to have that additional energy that prevents it from sort of being dragged in. So what this results in is this uh, excess energy at the surface, if you will, which molecules on the surface have to have to be present at the interface. And in practice, so, so that means that there's this excess energy or an excess surface force acting that's keeping these molecules at the surface. So if you can imagine an extra tensile force acting along the surface that's keeping these molecules at the surface, it's sort of like a trampoline where if you're standing at one point and you have, um, let's say, uh, even, even without the presence of any object on the surface, there's always a tensile force acting along the surface. So that's, that's how a trampoline would behave in terms of its force um, um, structure. So anytime um, there is a solid object on this interface, so long as the tensile force can balance the extra weight that you might impose, uh, you will not sink. You'll, you'll stay on afloat on the um, surface. And that's exactly the reason why some insects are able to walk on water because of this idea of an excess energy or a force at the surface. And so long as the um, insect can distribute its weight over a large enough area so that um, the surface force can balance it, uh, the insect will float. So let's define formally surface tension. It's defined as intensity of the molecular attractions at the surface leading to a force per unit length. along the surface. So this is a property of the fluid. It's given by sigma, denoted by sigma, um, and it has the units Newton per meter because it's a force per unit length. 
So if I look at molecules on a surface now, which experience this stretching force along the surface, um, you, you have done thermo, you know that every system tries to minimize its, surface, its, uh, its total energy, um, its free energy. And one way to do uh, that in this case would be to minimize the surface energy by reducing the surface area. If we look at sigma, which we just defined as force per unit length, we could also rewrite it as energy per unit area. The units are the same. This is Newton per meter. Um, and this is Newton times meter over meter square. So that's Newton per meter. And so we can write, think of this as an excess energy at the surface. So now if I have a finite blob of fluid, um, that blob of fluid, if it wants to minimize its, uh, surfa its excess surface energy, will want to minimize the surface area because the total energy, excess energy at the surface uh, would be given by A times sigma which is 4 pi r square times sigma for a sphere. And we know that the sphere for a given volume is the shape that has the least surface area. And that's essentially why um, any, uh, that's essentially why we get droplets of fluid. Um, that, that volume of fluid is trying to minimize its surface energy and therefore it decides to assume the form of a sphere so that the surface area is minimized. So if I were to now look at another application which is that of a, an insect, let's, let's try to explain how insects can walk on water. So if you take a typical insect, let's say it's got uh, a few milligrams of mass. So let me assume G is 10 meters per second and there's an insect that's uh, It's an insect that has lots of legs and it's sitting on water and its mass is 10 to the minus 6 kilograms, that's about a milligram. Um, if it wants to walk on water, then it better be able to have a sufficient length so that the force it exerts is balanced by the surface tension force from the water. Imagine as far as the uh, insect is concerned, this water surface is like a trampoline. Um, it stretches, it's like a membrane and so the insect just needs to be able to spread its weight over a large enough length or a large enough area such that the uh, weight is balanced by the surface tension force at the interface. So what should its minimum length be? We can calculate that just by knowing the surface tension coefficient of water. So the weight of this insect would be, assuming g is 10 meters per second square, the weight would be 10 to the minus 5 newtons. And we would say that force per unit length, sigma, is force per unit length and for balancing weight we need to have F is less than 
सिग्मा टाइम्स एल और एल ग्रेटर दैन एफ ओवर सिग्मा विच इन दिस केस इज डब्ल्यू ओवर सिग्मा सो वी गेट द मिनिमम लेंथ ऑफ द इंसेक्ट शुड बी टेन टू द माइनस फाइव ओवर सिग्मा फॉर वाटर विच इज पॉइंट जीरो सेवन इन मीटर्स एंड दैट टर्न्स आउट टू बी about 1.4 millimeters which sounds reasonable um you do see insects that are much larger than that typically um um which are able to walk on water but really um, small insects would not